Paula, if you want, um, since you're already recording here. I, I just started to, to record the session. Sure. Okay. Um, following, uh, thank you all for, for being here. Um, following our uh, prior meetings, um, on our last meeting, we have uh, showed uh, Cap and at my proposals to include entities in the space core. And today's agenda is to discuss and analyze the, the third option uh, based on items versus the, the, the space object based, based version. So, just a, a, a little tour. Um, this is, is isn't the the, f the full uh, data model, but uh, um, Atmire's approach um, adds uh, the type on the the item level, and our approach uh, we we are, we introduced on the space object level and created several um, uh, created an entity, a generic entity table that uh, enables to, to have dynamic uh, entities on the space. But uh, Atmire's approach uses items to um, to have those entities and um, a type field to to specify which en entity uh, which, which entity uh, is uh, uh, used. There are pros and cons for for uh, both uh, versions. The pros, um, we think our <laughs> our approach is flexible in, in is more flexible in a way that uh, um, you can deal um, entities in a, in a specific way. Um, we generalize the, the space object to have uh, the space the, uh, to have entities, uh, dynamic entities, and um, at the metadata value, it's also possible to have uh, or to 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 have field values that represent other entities. On uh, on uh, the option three. Uh, it, it is more simple. It is quick, quickest to implement. It reuses uh, lots of uh, item solutions like uh, metadata, support, search, discovery, workflows, item submission forms, uh, versioning, handles, OA, OAI support, REST uh, crude operations, creates uh, dates read but uh, it also has some cons um, our version it it is much complex it is it, it it is more difficult to implement it requires more resources uh, to implement it um, but, and if we like uh, features like versioning on um, Entities, for instance, uh, we have to implement it on, on the space objects. Uh, for uh, the third option, it, to, to me, it is, isn't clear in which way relations will be uh, implemented in the data model. Um, a collection is required for all items. Do we need it for entities? Uh, it's not a flexible way to relate entities, by example. Um, all publications will have a, a specific or, or a state uh, relation to, to authors. And to me, it, it, I don't see currently um, at the, the presentation layer um, how can I assign an entity to a, a value? Should we use the, the authority control for that? I, it isn't clear for me. <clears throat> so I left some uh, questions to discuss. Uh, if you, 
if you choose entities at item level, uh, this third option, can we later uh, migrate the, the already, already established data? For example, using uh, Flyway DB or something like that to, to migrate da data that is already stored in the, in the database. And other question, do we really need to generalize this space object? In uh, which particular cases do, do we need this? So uh, I open the discussion to, to you and please leave or, or any suggestions, comments. Uh, let's start to discuss. Thanks for the uh, clear overview. Um, we do have to discuss the, the cons that you listed there a little bit uh, in detail because they're not all 100% correct. But before I go into that, um, on your last slide, I think another important thing that needs to be discussed is why we need hard-coded Java classes to represent entities. Because both DSpace Chris as well as your option both have that generic object in it, an entity, and um, I forget the name, JDyna object or something like that, that in, in DSpace Chris's solution. So my main um, question here to decide or to discuss the, the three different solutions is why do we need to hard code something like a project or an author? Um, even before we talk about the generalizing the space object, because if we do, if we decide that it's not necessary to hard code um, uh, something like a project, then why would we need to generalize the space object at all? I, I agree. Uh, sorry, I, I agree with you. Uh, on based on our experience, uh, we uh, have just started to implement uh, author profiles in in this space five, and um, we would like that um, this space already provided the basic um, stuff like search and. APIs, something like that. Uh, we we don't want to to duplicate uh, work that is already established. If that um, classes were generic for for our proposals, we didn't have this this need to to duplicate uh, these uh, processes. Yeah, and I think at the end of the last meeting, I also. Uh, raise the question of can somebody give me an example of a feature that requires um, any entity like project or author to be a hard-coded Java class instead of a type of an item um, but no examples are given or uh, of, of use cases like that and we were thinking and we, we went through a number of potential candidates for use cases but we couldn't come up with any that is really necessary um maybe uh, if you can go to slide six um then we can explain a little bit more about the cons you listed um isn't clear in which way relations will be implemented in the data model um that was um in my presentation um it's it's in a table so I don't know if Ben wants to give more details on how that's done, but there is an, a, a table built that makes the relations between uh, particular objects. And the goal for that specific table was that it could directly uh, use a foreign key to the uh, to the item objects, so that we have a, a guaranteed consistent relation where if either one of the items would be deleted for instance that we do not end up with any broken links uh, that we have some safety here and so those um that thanks for the links tim um sure. and uh so the relations are defined in xml where you um, basically say okay these are two types of entities or items that we want to link together with a relation. Um, 
the second point a collection is required for all items do you need it that that is a as a valid point um and it's something that i think we should in future versions think of how we deal with that um but to me it does make sense that all objects are in some kind of collection because in these phase the collection um is not just a way to group things together, but also to provide some administrative functions for the objects that belong to that collection, workflow, submission, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think it makes sense, but it can be improved um, in future versions or should be improved. Uh, the third point, not a flexible way to relate entities. Um, by example, all publications will have relations to authors. I don't completely understand what you mean by that. Uh, okay, let me try to show you. Uh, I don't have your, your slides here. Uh, you, you On your slides, you, you have an XML like example for um, establishing the relations between entities. Uh, yes. Do you remember? And and um, in in that particular case, you were relating uh, publications with authors. When you say that, this means that all publications will have relation with authors. You don't you you are you don't have the the possibility to have one uh, entity which is. Uh, um, a publication that doesn't have authors. Uh, so. There's <clears throat> there's actually a minimum amount of um, related objects configured in that same XML. So you can, for instance, state that a publication has relations to authors, and you can say, okay, there's going to be at least one author, or you can also configure it to say there's going to be at least zero authors implying that it's okay to have a publication with, uh, without an author. You can also say there's at most one author or at most infinite of authors. So all of that is configurable. But if you, on the other hand, want uh, something that where you really don't want to be concerned about relations to authors, you can have a completely separate type for that and saying, okay, we have a type here that does not support relation to authors where that's not even possible where you don't want that kind of functionality so both of those would be possible using that configuration and tim thank you for pasting the link there if you if you look at the link it's defined by the um left cardinality and right cardinality fields in that xml well, field tags. So you see there at the bottom of the page, you see left type is publication, right type is person. So this is the relationship between publication and person. And then you see left cardinality minimum is a zero. So you need. Um, um, you can you can have a zero. <laughs> uh, yeah. Exactly. And you could there define there any other kind of number and maximum is not specified to say that it's unlimited, but you could also put a maximum on it for whatever reason. Okay. And so as Ben also said, you could also have a, a, a publication entity without that relation. And that would be then, uh, for example, a publication that only has um, authors in the metadata and no links to. I, I have a, a question. Is is this uh, so a, a relation? Uh, is this relation established for all entities uh, um, instance, or or uh, for? Let me try to explain. If you have uh, publication A, you have to define this for publication A, or you define this for all publications, and a publication A, publication B will have this same um, relation type or relationship type. 
Yeah, it will be for all publications, but nothing stops you from creating an, another entity that also okay. represents a publication that does not have this relation. Okay, that, that's what that was why I'm try. I tried to to put here the that. Uh, okay, you you have some type uh, some some type of workaround f solution f for this. This was what was I trying trying to say about this flexibility. If you have publication A and you want a different relationship for for uh, different than than the publication b that was uh, why i i wrote this but but, but it, there, there are some uh, workaround solutions for this thank you that's not really a, a workaround but it's, it's it's supported by the model you can have different types of publications if you like and one has an, a relationship to authors and other type of publication does not that's possible Right, so you could define one publication type as like a book. A book has authors, whereas like a piece of artwork has artists. Um, exactly. And you could define each of those as separate okay. types. So there'd be artwork as a type and book as another type. Um, but this basic example was just for a generic publication. So you're right, the basic example just shows that all publications in this case would have authors. But that's just an example of how you could implement a generic publication. Does that make sense, Paulo? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Levin already uh, sold me uh, their uh, option. <laughs> I, I, I have yeah. had to struggle to, to find uh, Khan's uh, approaches or, or <laughs> to put it here to, to, for us to, to discuss. Oh, no, I, I think it's great that you, you wrote these down, Paulo. Don't, don't, don't take it any other way. I think it's wonderful to, just, to dig into here in places that it might be confusing or that, um, that need clarity because it's good to talk through this and make sure we're all on the same page with um, the, how this model would work, essentially. And then for the, the last point, that is, I think, Ben, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there is, I mean, in our uh, proposal, in the implementation time, there was time to um, uh, extend the UI to make these relations and to define those relations in the UI. That's indeed work that still needs to be implemented. Yes, that's correct. But that's not very difficult to do, actually. I mean, it's just extending the submission forms with one new input type um, that allows you to search, and we can use solar for that in the items of a particular type. Um, yes. So we can say, okay, we want to search for items of type author, um, and, and a search can be done relatively easy. And I'm assuming yeah, we, that, oh, go ahead. We, we, we did implement a similar feature in the past, but of course not with the Angular UI yet. Uh, and not through the REST API yet. So that's that's something that still has to be re-implemented for that purpose. And I was gonna note here, I'm assuming that it, it if this was implemented at the UI level, it would not use authority control because it's using the SQL relationship table, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so that second point is that it would not be in via authority control, it'd be via that table relationship. Can I uh, just add a couple of questions here? <coughs> yes. Just to, I want to ask uh, to the attendee if uh, you have had time to to look to our comment, our latest document, and specifically to the paragraph about uh, relationship. Uh, because on this paragraph, we explain a bit uh, what worked well in this space crease, what worked not so well, and what we aim to, uh, to bring in uh, any possible alternative approach. Uh, so starting from the start, from the, the question also from Levan, uh, if we go, want to go on the space object or on item, uh, just a few points. If we decide that we need to go on item level, 
I need to understand why we have collection and community and uh, what make community and collection different than item and why we don't want to have some feature that we have for the item also apply to the collection. For instance, when you create a collection, actually you are uh, uh, using a wizard and I know that a lot of institutions we like to have an input form that can uh, um, be configured to, uh, to describe better the collection or to, uh, uh, to input all the information also related to the administrative aspect of the collection. This is the, the first thing. So if we feel that uh, we only need item, maybe we can also say, okay, we don't need to have community and collection are just as another example of item. Why community and collection are different than an author, an author profile? Uh, I think that they are different and uh, we could also be not immediately aware of the use case that make this entity different. But for instance, uh, on an author profile, it could be very important the relation between the author profile and the uh, user account, because you want to give uh, a special permission to uh, the user that owned uh, uh, the profile. Again, of course, you can solve that in a lot of different way. And if we improve the ACL or the authorization of this space, Maybe this is not so important as it could look now. But right now, if I talk about an auto profile, I expect that uh, a direct relation with an account is very important. And mm -hmm. this is also important because it's related to some authentication like ORCID. Another aspect is if you have different table, if you have different entities, it is much easier to implement caching. Uh, mechanism and you can decide about different strategy of caching depending on the entity for instance if you are dealing with a repository you can expect a huge number of items in the uh, old way that the space work but you can expect that all the other entity uh, maybe are huge in number but they will not change so much and are used a lot of time so you want to keep uh, a cache to access all your auto profile or your subject to quickly retrieve this information. It is possible to manage cache also if you have all the information in the same table, in the same uh, Java entity, it could be just a bit more uh, complicated. This is a, a couple of points about uh, why the space object or uh, just item object. Yeah, I, 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 I get that, Andre, and I th thanks for bringing that up. I think the, the thing that I struggle with with this is um, DSpace object is a lot more than just items versus collections and communities. I know we keep going at that, um, and I do understand that we need to clarify the difference between items and collections and communities. Um, and figure out why they're different and whether certain things need to be shared across them. Because I agree conceptually that like input forms, it's very logical that input forms should actually eventually exist not only on items but also on collections and communities. And maybe collections and communities should only be one object, maybe they should just be a collection. Um, so there's lots of different ways that we can improve the data model. Um, going forward and lots of things that I think we agree on here, but I think when we talk about moving everything to the DSpace object level, that's where I start to get a little bit concerned because there's a lot of things in DSpace object that are not item collection or community. Um, so when you move something up to the DSpace object level, you're now dealing with, now you can create bundles uh, via input forms, which sounds a little weird. Um, you can create bit streams via input forms. Maybe that's a little bit more logical. You can create sites via input forms. That's really odd. Um, you can create groups via input forms. That's still a little bit odd because they're mostly just names and relationships and permissions and e-persons, which is more an account via input forms. I, I get very confused as to like lumping all this together into one thing is very hard to kind of go at for me. And I'm just wondering if if taking a simple step of trying to move 
are trying to better understand things even at the item level, we can change these models as we go uh, release by release. It doesn't mean that if we decide that things are at an item level now that they have to be at that in D space eight or D space nine. It could be that we refactor this so that input forms now get shared across items and collections or, or, or whatever. Um, and maybe there's other aspects of items that also get applied to collections. But to, to argue that everything must go to the D space object level simply because there's a similarity between item and collection is a little odd to me. I'm just trying to get my mind around it. Yeah, I completely agree with that, Tim. Um, and also on, on, on the other uh, parts that uh, Andrea suggested, for instance, uh, if we're talking about items representing an author and we're talking about granting permissions uh, for that uh, author object to the e person representing that item that's of course very easy based using items because you can just grant write permissions on that specific author that's one of the important aspects of or important advantages of reusing that item object um, you can you can also use a submitter ID based on 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 uh, available on the item to link it to the e person. So all of that is is already available. And regarding caching, I would say it's a great advantage that we have caching implemented for items. And how often does an item change? How often does a publication change? How often does an author change? A publication once published doesn't change that often an author once present in the system it may change when the person leaves or when the person changes departments it doesn't change that often i think that's true for many objects and it's very much dependent on exactly what your repository is being used for how important the caching is for that purpose yeah i guess i, I don't want to see it go ahead andrea yeah, it's not so trivial, unfortunately, because uh, it's true that publication will not change once that they are uh, finalized. But typically, you need to submit the publication and you need to provide a lot of information and you have several steps before then the publication is finalized. And uh, depending on the use case, you can also face uh, uh, a scenario where you have a thousand of uh, a uh, concurrent submission in a day and uh, if you try to make any cache on a so fastly changing uh, entity it will become a mess so you need to to be able to distinguish between something that are under submission and change frequently and something that has been uh, finalized again i'm not saying that this is not possible if you use just an entity I'm just arguing that it could be more complicated and uh, uh, the same recommendation, the same that we say for this is just a first version and we can start uh, using a single entity and uh, move in separate entity later, we can work also in the opposite way. So we can decide to have a separate entity just for auto profile now that it look to be the most urgent need and merge back to the item when we are sure that is just fine to use a single entity. Another thing right. is, again, I disagree with uh, uh, Tim, for instance, about uh, the importance of some feature on other entity. If you look to the a person entity that could be the most strange compared to the item, having a workflow process attached to any person could be very useful because it will map the registration process so that you can decide to have a workflow to validate a new, uh, new user or you can decide to don't have these, uh, these workflows so that new user will become immediately uh, active or things like that. So having the ability to configure the form, the input form, and every game workflow is something that you want to apply to all the entity that you manage in this space. That actually is what we call the space object. And this also applies to bundle. Depending on 
which users you do the of the bundle, but having a, uh, the ability to create bundle, to have a workflow for approval, approval, to edit additional metadata at bundle level would be a great functionality in, in some scenario of digital library and so on. Yeah, I think that uh, I can I can understand looking at individual use cases there to bring um, features to other DSpace objects. I guess I'm just very concerned about um, doing this sort of work to move everything to DSpace object if it's going to require us to do massive changes elsewhere. I feel like we're almost building an entirely new system here if we do that because uh, we're going to have massive user interface ch changes with how how to manage bundles via input forms and workflow processes and now e-people via that. I'm just worried about the complexity of this. So I'm not saying that we couldn't eventually get there. Um, it's possible that, yeah, given enough use cases and enough scenarios, Andrea, you, you may be completely correct that maybe, the, maybe a lot of these things could be useful across other DSpace objects. I guess I'm trying to find a way that we can do this incrementally rather than um, all at once and turn this into a, a really, really massive overhaul of the entire system. I'm trying to kind of Yeah, but scope. we have a great opportunity now because we are redoing all. We are building the new user interface. So a lot of new stuff need to be built. And for instance, now we don't have a, uh, implemented the, um, the collection wizard. So right. we need to be able to create a collection, need to be able to create a community and so on. So I will prefer to invest one more day to, to have a general solution that apply to all the space objects, so also to community and collection, then build something specific for community and collection that we need to withdraw in one release. So th there are some stuff that need to be built and we can just build on this space object. Also because it's not true that uh, there is nothing at the space object level. Uh, this is something exists at the space API level and much more can be done with very little effort. That is actually what was done in the space Chris. In the space Chris, you can uh, browse and search for everything. And essentially the requirements until uh, the space Chris 5 was just to be a space object. So the change is very limited and you can search for everything. And this will be a great feature also to, to be able to browse by community or a collection. For instance, I agree that we don't need community and collection as separate identity, but I right. think that this is a different uh, topic then what we are discussing now. But, but I think that that proposal in itself, just even trying to be able to browse by each DSpace object, that implies a lot of work underneath that we're not planning for right now. That implies to me that we need to have different indexes um, and things of that nature at the API layer, not at the REST layer, not at the UI layer, to be able to suddenly um, bring these other features up. And that's where I start to get concerned. I feel like we're, we're expanding say that too large here. I can say that the work to do that is very limited because we have already done that in this space, Chris. And we need to do this similar work also in this space saver uh, in any case, because for instance, we want to have workspace item and workflow item indexed. So you can search also for workspace item and workflow item if you like the, uh, the demonstration that we do last week we have already indexed for space item and workflow item in this right. folder. And this was done essentially indexing uh, something more uh, under the space object. So workspace space item and workflow item are... Uh, they're not these space objects, yes, they're side they're objects. Are less than the space object. So index the space object is very easy because you have metadata for all. And the way that we was able to index for space and workflow in some way was to introduce an interface that uh, is uh, more abstract than the space object and was common to for space workflow and the space object. So I know for sure because we have done that that search and uh, browse the space object is quite easy. 
And I can uh, I am assume that also be able to create a workspace or a workflow based on the space object instead than uh, item is not so big effort because workspace item and workflow item are just wrapper around the item. But if you replace the, the item with a space object, almost all of the code will work because it's based only on metadata. So there is not so much work. Uh, this is just to, I want to be sure that all here are not to worry about the amount of work that does not exist. There is not so much difference about that. This so that's, that's where I think I would want to see a proposal for how that would work because I am worried about that. That's exactly what I'm worried about is that I, I think that this is more work than we are anticipating. Um, and so I, if, I, if it is not as much work as I anticipate it would be, then um, I'd be okay with it. But I'd like to see a proposal for how we would move all of these features to the DSpace object level um, in an easy fashion. Because I, 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 I can't see a way to get there quickly myself. But can I ask why would we need to do that right away? I mean, what what is um, the issue with working in two steps? And I mean, if if you talk about two steps, then you said earlier, Andrea, that you know we could also first hard code everything and then move it to the item level. I don't really agree with that because that's more um, code and more effort and more complexity to then reduce it. I mean, typically in iterations, you would add more complexity and only the complexity that is needed. So <clears throat> even if there is a proposal that would be workable, I don't see why we would need to do that in DSpace 7 and why we can't wait with that for a later version. Again, I, I think that we are going to, to implement something that we need to discard later. It is, for instance, the creation of community and collection, the, the, create, the registration of a new person, and all stuff like that. Uh, the other point that for me is very important is about caching. So I'm pretty sure that having separate table, having separate entity will be much easier in the long term. And, uh, Essentially, you are proposing to use just one single entity, a catch-all entity, and you will immediately face with uh, the most complex scenario where you need to manage something uh, really dynamic. That is uh, what we also have in uh, the space Chris, but was uh, limited to dynamic object, and uh, we have decided to have some first citizen uh, object as uh, as an entity. So if we want to go for iteration, instead you have uh, one data model that try to, uh, to solve all use case immediately, uh, maybe with uh, not an out experience or with in a not perfect way. I would prefer to just say we want to solve the most important use case that is the author profile that was uh, highlighted in a way that is uh, uh, possible more, uh, much more complete. So I, I would prefer to have a better ORCID integration in the first iteration instead to try to, to manage a generic data model if we are not uh, completely ready for that. Um, yeah, I, I understand that point of view and, and there there is some, I mean, I, I definitely understand that point of view. I guess the, the, one con the one problem there is that that won't bring us to um, compliance with OpenAir 4, from my understanding, simply doing author profiles well. Um, but I do agree that that would be nice to kind of concentrate on building that out more early on. Um, but from talking with the OpenAir folks, uh, they really need a way for DSpace to support not only author profiles, but also funders and potentially even organization um, identification identifiers. Um, so we need a way to be able to 
to support those. It doesn't necessarily need to be completely out of the box, but there needs to be some way to flip a switch to allow people to use that so they're open air compliant. Uh, without that, um, some of our agreements that we're trying to work on with the open air group kind of become null and void. Um, so we have three entities here essentially that we're trying to, to support at a bare minimum. Um, and it's perfectly fine if author profile is more built out than the other two, but we need to be able to handle and store funder identification and organizational information. Yeah. You can imagine that I completely understand this, yeah. this topic because it is exactly what the space Chris provide right now. Yep. Yeah, so we're not trying to, we don't, in DSpace, we don't need to do as much as DSpace Chris does um, with funders and with organizations, but we need to at least be able to capture that information so that folks can be open air for compliant. Um, so that's where this more dynamic data model, I think, becomes much more interesting because it would allow people to become open air compliant if you want that compliance. Um, if you don't want that compliance for whatever reason, you could either choose to ignore it or just, use author profiles. Um, so that, that's kind of where this, this, this picture is coming from a little bit. Um, and in terms of, I think, the, uh, the dynamic relationships, I think, Andrea, that would be something we could definitely learn more from you, but I still don't have a good sense of, um, of the complication there, and I still wonder in my head if there's a way to, to provide entity-specific indexing within solar or something to help manage those dynamic relationships a little bit better, even if the data model is highly dynamic, maybe the solar indexing is a little bit more entity specific in some way. Um, I don't know right off the top of my head how that would work, but, but I think that's something we could definitely learn from you. I don't think any of these, any of these three proposals we're looking at right now, I don't think we need to accept any one of them as is. I think it's more of a matter of which of these three seems the most promising to start to move forward with and then can we come together as a community and decide how can we improve on this how can we build on this what are the gotcha points that uh the dspace chris team has learned um, that we can really kind of get around uh, figure out ways around um, some of the issues that you've run into and encountered um, in all your years of working on dspace chris um, so i think that's kind of where it comes, sits at right now it's not that one we have to basically cut down each of these proposals on their cons, it's more about how can we build them up and find which one seems the most promising so we can improve upon it and, and kind of fill those gaps that we see. Okay. So, um, I, I'm sorry, I cannot give a other suggestion other than that, but uh, I really, it's hard to me to, to understand that uh, an author entity is an item. It's just something that I, conceptually, I cannot uh, understand. So our different objects have different purposes. Maybe if we want to have a simplification, we have collection, we have item, and we have contextual entity that can be everything else. So but why couldn't they? to similar but are not the same thing so what is i guess what is the key difference between an item and an entity what if you just called an item an entity and then that that um that item slash entity could be either a normal document it could be a video it could be a author it could be a um, art artwork it could be whatever sort of thing you wanted it to be like what's the key difference that's that's holding you back? Is it just the name item? Because if it's just the name item, then then why why not just kind of refer to items as entities? It's not only a matter of uh, of the name. Is a it's a way to uh, characterize the system mm -hmm. and try to build features that are specific of uh, your entity. Okay. So when we talk about item, we are talking about uh, metadata and digital object. This should be the, the most important focus of this space. So we need to keep a, a, an A open on preservation and uh, on storage needs and things like that. On the contextual entity, you want to have a better integration with external authority and, 
and think like, uh, like that. So having just separate concept will uh, facilitate communication, will uh, simplify it to code when you are going to, to, to implement something. And again, I think that uh, uh, the caching needs for an item and for contextual entity that are used more time is very different. Because an, uh, in an institution, you can create 1,000 publications in one day, but you will not have 1,000 new researchers in one day except maybe on the launch or on the start of the project, but it's not on the daily basis. So I think that there are some functional and non-functional difference between these entities. It's true, all is based on the database. So if we go to try to find difference, we can then say, okay, we just have a big table where we put all the stuff and it will work. Mm -hmm. Because this is the way that database works. So why you need two tables? You can just have one single table that is key value and you can put all stuff that you want here. It is true, you can do that, but I don't think that is conceptually the right way to use a relational database. So I'm curious what other Folks, um, other folks listening in here is I'm not even sure who else who else here. I know we've heard from Forest Science, from Atmeyer, um, from RCAP. I guess that's most of the folks here today. Um, yeah, because I guess I guess I'm just trying to get a sense of looking at these three models. Is there one that stands out as the most promising that we can work on? Like it seems like right now we're working on the the third sort of proposal a little bit and figuring out ways to improve that. Um, if that's the best use of our time, then I would like us to basically say that that is the best use of our time. So we could say, you know, essentially we're, we're working on this proposal three, we're going to change it into a community proposal and we're going to improve it and, and analyze this data model to try and find a way to, to implement this better. Um, but, but that's different than us continuing to compare these three models over and over and over again. And I guess I'm just trying to get a sense of, are we comfortable getting to a point where we can select the best of the three and start to work on it and improve it and turn it into a community model that we can build together? Are we comfortable moving in that direction yet or do we still need more analysis here? I think Livini is a good seller and <laughs> he, he, he sells us very nicely the, the, his, his uh, uh, version. I think the, the third version or third, third option isn't closed. I think it, it, it has the room to, to some improvements and mm -hmm. I think currently is the best solution I, I don't think uh, it, it's the, 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 the best solution for, for long term, but it, currently for the short term, it's the best solution. And, and I think we, we aren't stick with it. I think you can uh, extend it lately. Uh, after for, for the, for, Eighth version or, or or ninth version of the, this space, we can achieve what um, Andrea uh, told us. Uh, I think I think it, this version isn't closed. So uh, for now, for now, for this space seven, I think it's the correct version or approach. Okay. Yep. Thank you for that, Paulo. Do others want to voice anything here? Uh, Tim, yeah. uh, I think that uh, before going for option one, two or three, I think uh, there are, uh, even uh, from uh, reading the, your document, I mm -hmm. think that uh, first of all, we have to agree uh, about uh, what is the aim of all this uh, group. Because right. uh, I think that uh, we have different ideas uh, about uh, why we are going to implement uh, entities in this space. 
because uh, for somebody of uh, for some of us uh, the aim is uh, to uh, to uh, to be open air compliant for uh, others is uh, uh, only to have the, the chance to manage uh, auto profiles and uh, uh, for me for example is uh, to have uh, the most flexible data model to use this space in uh, whatever context you want so i think uh, uh, first of all we have to write down for example a document to uh, to make sure that all of us see the same aim for these uh, entities groups. Otherwise, uh, it, it can be useless to discuss uh, about option one, two or three. Uh, Claudio, we, uh, we started this discussion and we already uh, made that document. It, I think it's on the first meeting or something like that. And you can check it online when you, whenever you yes, want. Yes, 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 I know it. But uh, I agree with you. I think uh, it must be a, a community document, not only recap needs and uh, our vision for this place. Um, I agree with you. It must be shared with others. So, so yeah, and some of those details are in the DSpace Entities Overview document. I'm linking to the section that says background information, why new entities. And these were really key points that came out of um, steering group discussions. There's, um, there's several points in there, which are ones that you mentioned, Claudio, there. There's the, the need for author profiles, the need for better integration with ORCID. Um, we want to be more competitive with, uh, with uh, things like BPress Digital Commons, which actually does really well with these researcher pages, author profiles. Uh, we want better alignment with core next generation repositories recommendations. And we want, we want to be aligning with Open Air 4 guidelines. Um, and uh, there's some other key requirements which are listed under there, which the steering group actually did review and went through um, in more detail in the last couple meetings in terms of trying to uh, figure out exactly which things were optional and which things were required. Um, and some of the things they listed in there were, uh, were actually providing uh, an extendability, which you mentioned, where the entities we want to add while right now they're more Chris specific, somewhat Chris oriented, um, they want to be able to provide the capability for DSpace to be extended with other types of entities for other types of use cases. Um, that was something that came out of steering. They also wanted um, ideally this to be an incremental approach, um, not a gigantic step um, in DSpace just because it would keep people um, more knowledgeable about what's underneath DSpace and allow them to bring their knowledge forward incrementally instead of ripping everything out all at once. Uh, and they wanted the solution to allow for easier upgrades um, for existing DSpace sites, specifically in areas where uh, users may not necessarily want, uh, maybe they don't really care about author profiles, maybe they don't care about open air guidelines because that's not how they use their repository, but they can still just upgrade DSpace easily and almost ignore these entities if they don't want to utilize them at this point in time. Um, so those were some of the things that came directly from the steering group around uh, things we should try and push towards for these goals. Um, but, uh, but I'm curious if there's things that you see that are missing here or that, you, that were unclear. Um, I've been trying to document this as best I can, but maybe I haven't uh, documented this as clearly to everybody. Yeah, maybe if I can add something to what Claudio said. Sure, uh, thanks. Uh, I think that uh, we need to be a little bit more specific, maybe design a couple of use cases, such as the research information from one side and uh, cultural heritage from the other side, and see exactly the things that we discussed uh, today, uh, that Levin pointed out, for instance, uh, just put down onto paper and uh, uh, open a discussion. And uh, maybe a table would help, such as uh, uh, the rows could be represented by specific requirements, such as uh, is this entity, uh, does this entity need to be updated frequently, yes, no, and so. And uh, in the columns have the three options. And uh, 
uh, e each uh, cell should specify, uh, yes, uh, this can be done, yes, this can be done with this effort, yes, uh, this or no, this cannot be done with this option, and things like that. This would clarify a little bit, because I'm, I have the feeling that we are discussing a lot about uh, how to implement and not enough about what to implement. That's the, the feeling. I mean, the, these, uh, of course, this background information is very relevant, it's very important because it came out from, from specific context where, where um, uh, all these needs were, were discussed. But at the same time, they are so high level that is, it is difficult to uh, define the best implementation based on these. I would like to, to add also to, to Susanna that I think we already done these steps uh, on our late uh, on our previous meetings. Um, I think we are, we are discussing the implementation because we already discussed all the the requirements. We discussed we discussed the the. the and we 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 just we 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 reach the the phase that we need to to, to we saw uh, I think on based on third two or third meet three meetings we saw this space and how uh, this space crease and how he, he works. Uh, we had the, the possibility to to see. Uh, um, and I thank Balini for that, to see uh, how to implement, the, to install and implement the, uh, the space installation, configure it. And, and we also, um, uh, we, we also uh, um, uh, tried different approaches. So uh, I think we reached this step where uh, we need to find, I think we, uh, I don't have, have nothing else to, to add to already. I've been uh, at, uh, I think, I, yeah, I so, don't, sorry. Yeah, Paolo, yeah. Um, um, one thing I will add in here really quick, which may may help this, is part of the reason why couple of these requirements are a little bit um, a little bit maybe maybe we haven't dug into specific entities as, as deeply as we could we, um, we choose of, we choose author authors uh, yeah we did into, we did look author at authors, authors yes so we did dig into authors a little bit but we didn't dig into necessarily other entities and part of the reason behind that though is that um, what I keep hearing from from steering and others is that there is not a strong agreement uh, from all the various use cases and the ways that DSpace use, is used worldwide, there's not a strong agreement on the very specific entities that everybody wants, other than like authors. Um, everybody has different use cases, and as, as the DSpace Chris team has noticed, I mean, you got DSpace Chris, you got DSpace Glam, you got um, various flavors of DSpace Chris. And what I've been hearing from, from, um, from steering is that rather than us concentrate on perfecting specific entities, they would like it, like DSpace to be able to support sort of more generic entities so that other groups like the DSpace Chris team and other teams can build, um, build extensions onto DSpace using those generic, more, more generic flexible entities for different use cases. So DSpace is not trying to, to meet the DSpace Chris use case and it never will. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think it's going to ever replace DSpace Chris. I don't think it'll ever replace DSpace Glam. But I think what we want to try and do is enhance the DSpace data model so that it's easier to build um, systems like DSpace Chris, DSpace Glam, DSpace whatever, a million different flavors of DSpace for different use cases, um, and allow those different flavors of DSpace to really do that deeper dive in terms of building out entities to the to every single feature and every single property that needs to be on an entity. Um, that's not the, the goal of the overall DSpace system. Um, like Andrea, I think I mentioned earlier in this meeting, our goal is really to manage and deal with 
um, with documents as that primary sort of entity, electronic documents or whatever you want to call them, um, and then allowing the ability then to be more flexible and storing other sorts of things in your D space, but we need to um, need other uh, extensions to be able to manage those even better. So I guess that's what I'm hearing from steering. I'm not sure that digging into every single entity is going to help us solve this. Uh, but I'm if if there's if we want to build a table to start to get a sense of uh, of how various entities might be implemented, I'm I'm okay with that. I just I'm not sure that I have a good sense in my mind of how to structure that. So I I would be looking for some help. Um, on on that effort, um, and I and I still think that the the biggest thing to me is that uh, I think we got to just start moving forward with something and start to see where the walls are. I feel like we're kind of like stuck in this stage where we we're not willing to take a, a leap towards one of these um, and starting to leap towards and starting to figure out how can we actually implement this as a as a as a as a community would help us start to clarify a lot of these questions. And it would force us to really say, okay, you know, if we're doing this in this way, how can we now manage these dynamic entities a little bit, or cache these dynamic entities a little bit better? Can we do that in solar a little bit? How can we make this dynamic entity concept align a little bit more with what DSpace Chris currently has so that the DSpace Chris system could eventually utilize this? Um, things of that nature, uh, which we can only really get to those discussions once we've kind of started to to narrow ourselves down. So I know that probably doesn't really help us close up this meeting, unfortunately, here, and we're a little over time. But but I, that's where I really would like to see us go, is we just need to start to, to move on something. I'm starting to feel that most people are starting to, to go towards the option three that I've heard. But I know, obviously, that's not ideal for the DSpace Chris team. But I'd like to find a way to, to bring this all together so that we can we can make sure that the needs of the DSpace Chris team can be met in the same sort of situation. We can make a step forward um, with, with whatever we're choosing so that in DSpace 7, we have a smaller leap that we can do in DSpace 8 to start to align the roadmaps of DSpace Chris and DSpace. Because I think that's an overarching goal that we can all agree towards. Okay, I'll, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> Are there other thoughts and questions here before? I know we got to close up here. Yeah, and, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I need to add something. So there is another big question in our document related to um, loosely coupled relation that is very important. So I think that we need to, whatever decision we will take when we are ready to discuss about that, we will need to discuss how to manage relation because mm -hmm. I'm not sure or better, I'm sure that we can not only have structured relation. That is what is proposed in both option two and option three. When you talk about publication and author, there is a lot of complexity hidden into the tail. For instance, you have a lot of external author, and maybe you don't want to have author profile also for external people. If also right. you decide to have a minimal auto profile for external people with just a name, it is an important decision. We can take it, but uh, it's not the only issue. Uh, for instance, publication and author. Author could be not only person, but could be person and group. You can have a researcher group that sign a publication. And if you just need to create a link to another entity, you are not able to do that. Uh, if you want to allow that in this way, you need to have the inheritance to your entities that have a lot of complexity. So yep. there is much more to discuss. Yeah, I agree with that, Andrea. And that's actually why I'm trying to keep this scope very small. I want to make a small step in the right direction because I agree that there's probably going to be a ton of complexity in even doing a small step. And yes, so I but I am afraid that complexity in that smaller step rather than in a massive step is kind of where I'm coming from. Yes, but I'm afraid that if also we make a very small step and we just say publication are related to author, uh -huh. if we say that in this way, we are going to make a wrong step. Because we need to manage external author, we need to manage relation with organization because they are already managed in this space. So in this space item, you have the authority framework, 
that allow you to manage this loss kind of relation. So before to introduce anything, I think that we need to clarify when we want to use authority, authority framework and when we go to use the relation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will create some confusion and will make migration in future version more complicated. Just two comments. I mean, first of all, it's not because the relation is possible that you have to use it. You can also use other means to add an author to an item or an entity. And second about research groups, I mean, you can also define an entity that's a research group and say that that research group has a relation to persons or authors and have that research group have a relation to the publication. I mean, so that's one of the reasons why we want to make this model um, in this way is that it, it is flexible enough to support any of these use cases. Um, and I don't, uh, I mean, Ivan, please. Yeah. Sorry. I, I want to stress this point. I cannot do that uh, elsewhere. So I know what we are going to, we want to try to achieve because I'm the editor of most of the documentation that you have cited. So yep. I'm involved in next generation repository. I'm the editor of the guideline for open air and Chris. Yep. So I'm involved in all this stuff, so I know them very well. It's not the same to say you can create a relation with author and a creation a relation with the group and you can decide which you want to use. Because the relation is just one and sometimes you need to use author, sometimes you need to use group and you need to mix these two entities together and it is important to know if the author has been cited before the group or vice versa. So there is a lot of complexity here. I think that we can work together to improve whatever solution we decide, so two or three. I'm trying to, uh, to give on this table my experience about 10 years of use of the space crisis in complex uh, scenario and uh, a strong understanding of all these domain. So yes. I am not saying that solution three is a no way, but I think that uh, as it is now, is not an output to be a step toward a merge of the space crisis in the space or thing like that. If some minimal requirements are not respected, we will end with a solution where the space crisis user cannot use the space seven as a basis to build something and will need to stay on something else. This may, it may uh, mean that we need to fork we need to work on the space crisis instead of work on the space. And we are going to subtract resources to, to the community. So my goal is uh, whatever we want to do, I want to do it in a direction that will make the space crisis and the space closer. That don't mean that uh, the space needs to have all the feature of the space crisis because they may be not apply. But if I need to store an information that is needed to the space crisis, I need to have the right room in this space. Otherwise, I will build my structure and I'm going to fork the project. This is the real issue here. Right. And and I, I cannot accept to have, sorry, I am going to conclude. Okay. Uh, to a, a solution that is just the first step because we need to also provide something fastly and it's not really the solution to long term because we say at start, we don't want to have something that uh, can be marketed against uh, B press and have all the functionality that is the space Chris that already exists now and you can use now. We want to build something better. So if we need to build something better, we need to do that in the right way from the start. This is my point. Yeah, and Andrea, we definitely do want your expertise in all of this, and we do have a common vision here that I want to make sure that um, that whatever we're building is in line with what DSpace Chris uh, can use and, and systems like DSpace Chris. So that that's why I was clearly, or I was trying to clearly state that these three proposals are not static in any way, shape, or form. And no matter which one we choose, it's going to be a community project. Um, it's going to be uh, input from the entire community. It's going to involve a lot of, it's going to need a lot of feedback from DSpace Chris and from you, Andrea, in terms of making sure we're aligning this first step 
well with DSpace Chris. But I think it's going to have to be a first step. We just need to make sure that first step is in the right direction and not going in a way that is um, that does not align with DSpace Chris. But the reason why I think it has to be a first step is because of the the timelines on these things. We don't want DSpace 7 to take forever. And, and I'm hearing that we would really like this to be a part of DSpace 7 if possible. Um, at least from steering, that's what they would really like to see. And that's what the open air project really wants to see. They don't want us implementing open air 4 in 2020. They want it by 2019 if we can do that. Um, so, so I think it's going to have to be a first step, but we want to make sure that first step is in the right direction and in a way that we can build upon that to move us in the direction of DSpace Chris so that the two roadmaps come together. So I think we agree on a lot here, Andrea. I think it's a matter of trying to figure out how we can modify one of these three proposals to, to better align with uh, the needs of DSpace Chris and similar systems. So yeah, that's that's kind of, I hope you understand that and agree with that, Andrea, but I definitely don't want DSpace Chris to go a different direction. I agree completely that we need to bring this stuff all together and make the right first step. Um, I just want to make it clear that none of these proposals are static and none of them will be accepted as is. Um, they will all require community feedback and ongoing work. Okay, thanks to clarify that, Tim. Sure. I think that this is very important for uh, uh, for the community. So we make a lot of effort to avoid the creation of a DSpace Chris community, and we want to continue in this direction. Mm -hmm. So this is yeah. why DSpace Chris is on the DSpace wiki, and we don't have a separate mailing list and anything like that. Right. Yep. Yeah, and I think steering is steering agrees with that completely. I don't think steering wants DSpace Chris to be a separate product. They want it to move closer to being more of an easy add-on to DSpace, so people who want it can almost flip a switch and turn it on. So I think all of us have that same idea in mind. It's just a matter of of getting there and finding a way to align these roadmaps. I think that we should be also clear with the steering and the community about their expectation because. We spent uh, five meetings to analyze existing code and see in demo of an existing system that is the space Chris to try to understand a bit better what the space Chris is. And uh, also after this demo, there is not a wide understanding of what the space Chris is and how it is implemented. Of course, it is a complex system, so it's normal. But right. if we go in this way, expect. 10 meeting to detail better each proposal before to go into implementation. Because if we don't do that, we are not really building the solution together in a community driven uh, way. Because once the development will start, we are based on uh, voluntary work. So the reality is that at some time, some, someone will uh, uh, devolve 30 day, 40 day to develop something. And if we are in the final rush of a version, I really want to avoid that uh, a last minute uh, contribution will be included because just we have promised to the steering to the community to have something like that. More or less is what we say in 10 slides look reasonable and we go to accept. Because yeah. if we just need to summarize the space Chris in 10 slides, I can do that. I can add a lot of detail. And maybe all the people here will be very happy to have just the space Chris as is in the space. But we can go much more in depth on the space Chris than just 10 slides. Yeah, I agree with all that, Andrea. I think the only point that I would push at is I don't think we will have the time to have I don't know, five, 10 meetings on every single topic. Like I said, we need this done in, by 2019. So I think the, the proper way to go about this is we need to find a way to scope this small enough and make it a right first step so that we don't have to discuss every single little detail this year um, of, of everything that DSpace Chris does. That's what I mean. Um, but I think we need to make the right 
step in the right direction and we need to scope that step small enough that it is that we are comfortable with achieving all of that in time for 2019 and that we can show momentum towards a broader goal of, of making future steps on the roadmap and actually align those steps on the roadmap. We can define what they are in the roadmap and we can write them into the roadmap and say, and in DSpace 8, we are gonna make this next step um, that will help us align even better with DSpace, Chris. But I think that first step is, a very, is very important to scope small because as you noted, there's a lot of complexity around all of these topics. So we need to keep the scope quite small and we need to make it in the right direction so that we can build further steps on top of that. That's kind of where I'm coming from here. I, I don't think we're going to be able to solve every single uh, problem in one year, uh, but I think we need to make one good step in the right direction and build upon that, build out a roadmap for what comes after that. And I hope that you would agree with that and that you can help us figure out what that first right small step is and how we can start to do that alignment, realizing that we can't do everything at once. Okay, I think that everyone will try to do their best. Yep. Okay, so we're we're well over time here, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know that we've come to an exact conclusion. But I think I still feel like the, what I'm hearing is people are leaning more towards the option three proposal. But obviously, there's a lot that needs to be discussed in in moving that forward and making that more of a community project. Um, and uh, the steering group has a meeting tomorrow, actually. That's their next meeting. So they'll be talking about this a little bit more um, tomorrow as well, though that will also, I'm sure, wrap over into the um, DuraSpace Summit, which is next week. Um, so there'll probably be discussion at the DuraSpace Summit as well. Um, and I don't think I have anything else to wrap up with here today, unfortunately. I can report back. Um, Excuse me, I can report back on what goes on uh, at the steering group tomorrow and also uh, give, a, give a report back from the summit, although I won't be there uh, in person, but I plan to attend virtually. So uh, thank you all for your time and for the discussion, and let's figure out a way to, to move this together, to get, move this forward together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice weekend.